r slash ask reddit what do people complain about that literally never happens people pretending to be transgender so they can enter a bathroom and rape people the worst thing about this is that people honestly think a ducking different sign would thwart a serial rapist. It's one of the most ludicrous, desperate arguments I've seen being brought up by apparently serious people. To top it off, it only perpetuates the stereotype that rapists are creepy strangers. In reality at least 80% of rape cases involve a perpetrator who knew the victim on a personal level. We teach our kids stranger danger but we don't teach them that their parents coaches, teachers, relatives, and friends are much more likely to harm them than strangers. If they're so concerned about their child being raped, maybe they should start by looking into what's going on in their immediate circle. Maybe stop excusing those high school athletes and well-liked teachers because she was asking for it or we need him for the big game against Lakeview City on Friday. Stop brushing off Uncle Ricky's pervy behavior as, oh, Classic Ricky, actually listen to your child's complaints about Pastor Bill instead of dismissing them because he is a Christian. He would never do such a thing. Drugs on Halloween candy. Only documented case was a man that poisoned his and his neighbor's children for the life insurance. I think there was one where a guy's nephew got into his cocaine stash so they made it look like a Halloween poisoning. Edit, here's the Snopes on Halloween poisonings if anyone wants it. I was wrong. It was heroin. People trying to always sell me drugs as a kid did it. Guys what I meant was how everyone says watch out for the guy that goes hey kid want some drugs? That is rare occurrence which very few people witness. Don't you think? Of course people offer you stuff in high school college work. I mean, what are friends for? Semicolon. It happened once to me when I was 15 but I just told the other kid no thanks. I don't smoke weed and he was like alright. My parents warned me for years to watch out for strangers selling drugs to me. Come high school, the ones trying to sell me drugs, usually just weed, were my friends. Actually, one other time in Seattle it was about 2am and I was walking through the bad part of town. A guy on the street corner asked if I got high and I said no and he said cool then. Stay that way bro and I walked off. A guy a block later asked if I had any drugs and I referred him to the drug dealer I met earlier. Edit. Hold on. One more that just happened a few weeks ago. A guy was out of gas and asked if I could help him out. All I had was my debit card so I paid for some gas for him and he offered me the one stroke two ounce of weed he had on him as a thank you. <laughs> Vaccines causing autism. Even if this were true, isn't autism better than having a dead child from an easily preventable disease? Autistic guy here. Ducking yeah it's better. I don't get why people are so scared of the disorder. It's not ducking mental retardation. It's a neurological condition. If they're so affronted by the possibility, why aren't they scared of people who have it and walk amongst them? Edit. Obligatory holy shit rip inbox and thank you for the gold kind redditor. I'm glad my most upvoted comment ever, even across alts, is about something I'm really passionate about. Edit 2. Yes. I completely understand that autism is a big spectrum and there are highs and lows. I don't mean to generalize. I know there are a lot of people out there on the lower end of the spectrum. A cashier giving someone a weird look because of an item they bought or commenting on items they're buying together. Never worked as a cashier but I'm pretty sure they don't care what you buy and hi how are you. Find everything you were looking for, is code for hurry and pay for your shit then get out. Every few months there's an ask reddit post going what items would you combine to freak out a cashier, and the comments are always the most try hard nonsense. No one who works in a place that sells everything under the blue sky is gonna go oh shit he's a rapist. It's because you bought a knife, rope, and lube. Or that you're gonna duck a gherkin because you bought condoms to go with it. Because generally speaking people don't use the shit they buy at the same time. Why on earth would you think the cashier would think anything beyond gherkins to eat? Lube and condoms for the bedroom. Oh god he's looking at me like a creep. And he smells. Duck. Just avoid his eyes. Like do you look at a guy buying a cart full of groceries, sweets, and toilet paper and assume he's gonna turn all that into some weird fiber filled stew? And yes, I am fun at parties. Duck you very much. You say that but I very clearly remember two ladies who came in and bought one cucumber, strawberries, whipped cream and lube. My mind instantly thought well they're going to have a fun afternoon. Quicksand. 
Now that I think of it, it feels like every kids show back then had some quicksand scene in it. They do and I was terrified of quicksand as a kid. We went to some amusement park and there was a story walkthrough that had a quicksand scene and I just lost it and had to be taken home early. Adult me is very grateful that it isn't an actual thing that happens everywhere. I've read stories about people, women, yelling at men for holding the door open for them. I don't know if that's never happened, but where I am I'm willing to bet it's never happened. I'm a woman, and I hold doors open for everyone. Most people I know do, it's common courtesy. I'm British and if someone holds the door open for someone else you can end up in a no after you I insist infinite loop. Then eventually both people try to go through the door at the same time and end up apologizing profusely at it. Canada does this too but where do you think they learnt it? This literally happened to me about 10 minutes ago. Obviously, I can't leave my office again before I know they've left for the day. Claiming that the Potters will hijack democracy and stay president when their second term is over. Some claim that Dubai would do this. Similar claims about Obama. If Trump manages a second term, most likely someone will claim the same about him. I remember my good friend's dad believed this wholeheartedly about Obama. He once said that some beach came out and said on live TV that he wouldn't give up his power after his second term. When I asked him to show me where Obama said if he just acted like it was erased from the internet to prevent an assassination attempt. Have you talked to him since then? A bunch of people who were predicting that have pivoted over to the deep state idea. The one where Obama didn't really step down and is controlling everything from the shadows. Living in Colorado where people, news agencies, and clueless law enforcement constantly fear monger over marijuana laced candies being given out to trick or treaters the entire month of October. No one ever has ever done that ever. Not only are edibles kinda pricey and come in limited. Small servings per container. Open bracket. 10 mg servings and there's normally 4 or 5 per container. But no one in the history of edibles has bought 500 of them. Spent $1000 plus, and thought let's go drug some duckin' kids. Edit, if you know of anyone handing out drugs and or drug laced candies this Halloween or ever please let me know and get me an address thanks. Edit 2, my first gold, thank you stranger, D. I have a friend that always goes bananas about these things. This year I actually stopped her from talking about it and explained that no one is giving away free drugs. Drug are expensive, why would they do that? Especially randomly, where there's not guarantee of a return customer. She was like ooh. At least the person you were talking to accepted that. I usually get a response of there's some sick people in this world. They do it for fun. Okay sure, whatever. I used to work at a computer tech support firm. Held the job full time for 3 years. Back to back calls. My confession. Our customers weren't nearly as technically illiterate rude as me and my colleagues made them out to be. Actually, 99% of our customers were kind and just wanted help. I guess exaggerated stories of the call center just made for good smoke break conversation. It's like a rite of passage in the phone support world. We sometimes received a rude customer, but chances were that they had just been worn down from an earlier call with an inexperienced employee. Rarely did we get the entitled break. And when we did, he she was always pretty easily taken care of. I guess you remember the particularly bad ones. That's probably normal. I'm always wondering why the people most afraid of terrorism are the ones who live way out where the buses don't go and almost certainly don't regularly spend time with people who don't look an awful lot like themselves. My cousin lives way out in the sticks. I mean. They have a use for the phrase the main dirt road because they live on a dirt road that is off of another dirt road. It makes the front page of their weekly newspaper when the grocery store has a new manager. Every second or third post on Facebook, by some miracle they have decent internet service, is some macho bullshit about being ready for ISIS. A lot of stuff about Muslims too. Even though I'd be a little surprised if any Muslims lived within 20 miles of him, or if he'd ever met one. It's people like this who get manipulated the most. My mom still insists that killer bees are a major concern edit. Some of these responses showed me killer bees are still a big concern in certain areas around the world. My mother lives in central Florida so hopefully she has no need to truly worry. 
Okay so I watched a documentary on killer bees years ago when I was about 7 and it ducked me up big time. I had night terrors about being chased by killer bees that resulted in my sleepwalking. Well sleep running through the house and running into furniture. Had these night terrors off and on for a few years until the internet became widespread and I could do my own independent research and figure out that discover a channel documentary I watched when I was 7 was less than credible. Texas agriculturist here. African killer bees are a major concern in the south. Their hives are in the ground. And they looks almost identical to your average honeybee. In some cases lawnmowers can run them over. Or vehicles. Next thing you know you're in the hospital seizing in anaphylactic shock. Seen it first hand many a time. Slipping on a banana peel. Now I've actually done this. On purpose. Mind you. But those bastards are slippery. Not as slippery as the ones that created the stereotype. That race is extinct. The war on Christians in the US. No one is persecuting you. John Stewart put it best. You have confused a war on religion with not getting everything you want. Exactly. As a Christian myself. This infuriates me to no end. So you've spent decades physically and psychologically tormenting LGBT people. Let millions die of a certain virus. Kick them onto the streets, and damned them to hell. And yet when a bergerful is ruled and these people are given some basic human rights, you're the victim. You're not being persecuted. In fact, the law still allows churches to refuse to hold same-sex marriages. You're not the victim. You know what you guys are? Spoiled, rotten, little, brats, rant. People getting attacked by bears in Scranton. PA. Edit. Fact. Bears eat beets. Edit 2. Oh man. My top comment is in reference to something Dwight said. This is one of the proudest moments of my life. Also gold. Thank you. Stranger. Bears. Beats. Battlestar Galactica. Bears not so much. But you do need to watch out for the Scranton Strangler. People getting Taco Bell shits. SMH you all just got weak stomachs. Taco Bell was my absolute favorite fast food place as a kid and I never had a problem. As an adult I hardly ever go there. Maybe like once every couple years. But I still have never gotten sick from it. It's probably from overeating. That'll give you the loose poops from any restaurant food. I hear more people complain about other people saying new year new me. Than I've ever heard someone say new year new me. Office workers exaggerating how many hours they work. Working a 55 hour week once or twice a year doesn't mean you do that every single week. I sit next to all of you every day and watch you put in 40 hour weeks just like me. But we still sit there interviewing job candidates and tell them about how we work hard here. Usually 50 60 hours. Why are we lying to ourselves about this? It's not a thing to brag about. When I hear people are working that hard I just feel bad for them. They are either getting paid too little, have a shitty home life, are understaffed, or are bad at their job. All of those are things that deserve pity, not praise. Edit. I get it. There are exceptions. I just answered Arp's question with the first thing that sprung to mind. My experience is entirely anecdotal and limited to one industry and like 5 companies. Academics do this a lot too. Tenured and tenure track professors estimate that they put in like 60 hour weeks regularly. But because they set their own research and writing schedules, it just feels like a lot more than an 8-5 job because you did 2 hours on a Saturday afternoon or worked in the evening instead of the morning one day, etc. I don't think a lot of people realize that a 60 hour work week over 5 days is working from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Every single day, over and over again. Your gay marriage corrupting my kids and turning them into sexual deviants who are okay with marrying a horse and other terrible, terrible stuff. Gym bullies, or people being really judgmental in the gym. I have worked out consistently 4-5x a week in a gym, for over 10 years now, and have literally never seen or encountered this. It's understandable if you are out of shape in one way or another and are self-conscious. But I think mo people will agree that you are your own worst critic and it's really all in your head. To be honest, 99% of the time. 
people and they don't care about you. Especially the huge guys because they are too busy focusing on their own routine or checking themselves out in the mirror to look for games or whatever. It's like people think the swallest guys in the gym are bad guys from a B-movie in the 80s who are waiting to call everyone smaller than them a dweeb. If you take the time to ask the really in shape people for advice, tips on form and things like that, you will find they perk up and are very helpful and willing to even set out time from their routine to give you a mini personal training session. Just make sure you ask at the right time, not mid set or when they are panting from exhaustion. Some of the friendliest people I have met in life were people you'd think were a-holes, just because they're in the zone and have an intense focused look on their face, or are ripped. If someone is staring at you in the gym, it's probably either because you look good, are interested in an exercise you're doing, trying to make friends with people who share a common hobby, or maybe you're doing an exercise with poor form and they want to help but don't know how to approach without someone getting defensive. Planet Fitness is the biggest gym bully of them all. Chem Trails Turning My Frogs Gay. Atrazine. One of the most common pesticides in the world, induces complete feminization and chemical castration in male African clawed frogs. Atrazine exposed males were both demasculinized, chemically castrated, and completely feminized as adults. 10% of the exposed genetic males developed into functional females that copulated with unexposed males and produced viable eggs. Atrazine exposed males suffered from depressed testosterone, decreased breeding gland size, demasculinized feminized laryngeal development, suppressed mating behavior, reduced spermatogenesis, and decreased fertility. These data are consistent with effects of atrazine observed in other vertebrate classes. So, not chemtrails, but yet, yeah, there's common stuff that does indeed turn male frogs into females. This is something my local community deals with. But the presence of Muslims and implementing Sharia law in America, I've seen countless blogs claiming that my city lives under Sharia now, though not one can cite an actual law, their secret laws, close bracket, no one can point out a court case upholding such a thing, yet, they say, no evidence of community leaders pushing for Islamic domination, the Quran tells Muslims to lie, close bracket, a couple even cited an instance where a local Christian church was cited for a civil property infraction, which the church admitted to, corrected the problem, done, but it was evidence of a war on Christianity. A Muslim family lives down the street from me, I've only talked to the husband briefly, but the only reason I know they're Muslim is because my neighbors told me to watch out. The other day, I saw the father outside, mowing his lawn in cutoffs. It was terrifying. America sends too much money to other countries. Double quote. The average American thinks that about a third of the budget goes to foreign aid. In reality it's not even measurable. Less than 1% of the annual budget. Now, the military budget. Edit. For discretionary spending. If you spend money on military then send your military to other countries. Does that count as sending money to other countries? Message allergies equals people with a stomach ache because they overrate at the Chinese buffet. Stupid selfish millennials living life for themselves and no one else. Squandering all traditions yeah, this doesn't happen. We just keep to ourselves and we expect you to leave us alone with your 300 year old BS. Just because we don't want your shitty traditions to apply to us doesn't mean we want them to stop existing. Do whatever the hell you want as long as it doesn't affect me. Edit. I'm glad this sparked such good discussion. It's something that needs to be talked about more without just name shaming generations. Millennials seems to be a derogatory term these days. I'm also a Gen Xer, and I'm over the moon at how liberated and tolerant the younger generations are. It's like seeing the future of the country in advance. People requesting trigger warnings for dumbass shit. All the trigger slash content warning requests I see are usually pretty reasonable. Or contain to actual safe spaces where everyone is on the same page with that kind of shit anyway. Every trigger warning request for something stupid I've seen has been by obvious trolls. I hate how trigger has become associated with SJWs. It's a real word with real applications. Especially for people with PTSD, they have triggers that could mentally bring them back to when they were in a war, or when they got raped, etc. Edit, I'm pretty bad at explaining things but I want to clarify that I mean trigger has become associated with SJWs as in, 
Whenever anyone hears the word trigger in normal conversation, they start to think it's a fake or made up thing, or start using it as a joke. Dot. I also think the word SJWs is stupid and I hate when people use it to describe people who are just trying to push for equality. But that's kind of the point I was trying to make. A okay to have a warning if a lone pair of titties has wandered on screen but good golly god if you try to suggest that maybe some people should know if there's a graphic rape scene in a film. Everyone on reddit seems to think that grown adult men can never talk to children or they'll be stoned by their community. Sure, if for some reason, you're trying to have a conversation, alone, with a goddamn tween at a park, it'll look a little fishy, but as a chubby, hairy, adult man, in the proper context I'll talk to kids in passing fairly often and no one's ever made any sort of problem of it, ever. As long as the parent is there, and you're lighthearted about it, you're not going to get crucified for making a joke or funny remark to a child. I also counsel for a church middle school group and have often chaperoned them outside of the church and never once has anyone questioned me, restrained me, or given me any sort of dirty look for being with 1-6 middle schoolers. Sometimes just girls. Sometimes just boys, usually both, on any given day. This one infuriates me because it's almost like these the people complaining are the only ones making the situation worse. As long as you're friendly and not overstepping boundaries, you'll generally be welcome where you go. For over a decade me and my dog would stop at the playground every day a little afternoon. The kids loved that dog, and he fully enjoyed being around some small people who could match his energy. I am a bit older. For years this was never a problem. Then some new lady in the neighborhood directly confronted me by asking don't you think it's a bit strange for a grown man with no children to hang out at playgrounds? I kinda get it. I'm 6 foot tall, bearded and have facial scars. I have to admit I might be a bit scary looking. It turned out that for years the mothers at the playground had been making these sorts of comments behind my back. I never knew I was creepy playground guy. The next day as I was walking I decided I would skip the playground. But my dog was having none of it. He literally started to cry. Duck those dunts. I still stop by that playground every single day. I have a different dog now. But she loves those kids just as much as my old dog did. I think it's her favorite part of going for a walk. When someone starts going off about I don't care blah blah I am not going to use Zezir as a pronoun. I ask them if they've ever met someone who asked this of them. Never had anyone give me an affirmative. I've also never met anyone who demands these new pronouns so strictly. And I live in NYC. Edit. I don't mean to say that people don't do this. But there's this weird character that some people seem to rage at. This in your face trans non-binary person who will call forth some sort of pitchfork brigade if you have trouble learning what amounts to a new language. I've seen some snowflakes do this on Tumblr. But in my experience most people who want to transition are, as someone said, pretty chill about correcting you. So long as you don't make a big heckin deal about it. Razor blades and candy during Halloween. Immigrants taking your jobs, you would literally never even consider sweeping the streets or cleaning houses for a living. You cretin. Edit hi. I'm back. So just to clarify, I honestly didn't mean to offend immigrants whatsoever. I work alongside many people from various countries across the world, in all sorts of disciplines. And I will happily state that they are excellent at their jobs and thoroughly decent people. Strangely enough. Just like the majority of people I work with, who would have thought, the gist of my original comment wasn't intended to imply that immigrants only do manual labor work. If it came across that way, I sincerely apologize. The mythical welfare queen in front of them in line at the grocery store buying $700 and steak with food stamps before getting in their brand new Escalade. Like. Welfare fraud exists but it is so statistically small and frequent that it's extremely unlike that people see it anywhere near as much as they claim to see. It's like 10. 000 spoons when all you need is a knife. Never has one person accumulated that many spoons. Speaking of public restrooms, I, a man, was at a place where the men's room had a trough for a urinal. The place was crowded, a man, who is only allowed in the men's room comes in with his little girl, five-ish. I looked at her, then at all the penises she could clearly see. The man would have caught hell if he went into the women's room. So I think he did the right thing. 
but that poor little girl and all those penises. Edit. To clarify the trough and experience, the venue is a drive-in movie place built in the 60s. The trough is like a big clawfoot tub in the middle of the bathroom. Stalls at the end. You stand and pee in the tub, with your penis very exposed to whoever walks by, or is next to you, or across from you. Basically anyone in the bathroom. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.